Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and we are reading SCP-002, also known as the living room. I'm guessing this room lives. SCP number 002, object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-002 is to remain connected to a suitable power or supply at all times to keep it in what appears to be a recharging mode. In case of electrical outage, the emergency barrier between the object and the facility is to be closed and the immediate area evacuated. Once a facility power is reestablished, alt alternating bursts of X-ray and ultraviolet light must drop the area until X SCP-002 is refixed to the power supply and returned to recharging mode. Containment area is to be kept at negative air pressure at all times. Teams including a minimum of two members are required within 20 minute, uh, within 20 minute, meters of SCP-002 or its containment area. Personnel should maintain physical contact with another at all times to confirm there is another person present, as perception may be dulled, skewed, or influenced by proximity to the object. No a personnel within below a level 3 are permitted within SCP-002. This is a requirement may be waived via written author authorization from two off-site level 4 personnel. Command staff issued such a waiver must be escorted by at least five level 3 security personnel for the duration of their, their contact and must temporarily surrender their rank and security clearance. Following contact, command staff will be escorted at least 5 kilometers from SCP-002 to undergo a 72-hour quarantine and psychological evaluation. If deemed fit for return to duty by psych staff, uh, rank and security clearance may be restored when quarantine expires. SCP-002 resembles, resembles a tumorous, fleshy growth with a volume of 60 meters square or 2,000 feet. Oh, that's cubed, sorry. It's a volume of, six, of roughly 60 meters cubed or 2,000 feet cubed. An iron valve hatch on one side leads to its interior, which appears to be a standard lower department of modest size. One wall of the room possesses a single window though no such opening is visible from the exterior. The room contains furniture which, upon close examination, appears to be sculpted in bone, woven hair, and various other biological substances produced by the human body. All matter tested thus far show independent or fragment DNA sequences for each object in the a room. Refer to the... Mahausen Report, Professor of De Document 00.023.603, for details related to objects discovery. To date, subject has been responsible for the disappearance of seven personnel. It also has been, in its time at the facility, further furnished with two lamps, a throw rug, a television, a radio, a beanbag chair, three books in an unknown language, four children's toys, and a small pot of plant. Tests with a variety of lab animals, including higher primate, may have failed to provoke a response in SCP-002. Cadavers, as well, failed to produce any effect. Whatever process the subject uses to convert organic matter into furnishings is apparently only facilitated by the introduction of living humans. Mulhausen Report. The following is a brief report detailing the discovery of SCP-002. Shetik was discovered in a small crater in northern Portugal, where it, where it struck the Earth from orbit. Encased in a shelf-thick rock, the fleshy exterior of the object was exposed by the impact. A nave armor happened upon the site and reported its findings to the village elder. Subject gained the SCP. 
attention when a level 4 agent posted in the area detected a small radioactive anomaly generated by the object. A collection squad of SCP security personnel led by a General Mohausen was immediately dispatched to the area where they quickly secured the subject in a large container and performed initial testing with subjects recruited from the nearby village. Three men individually sent into the subjects subsequently disappeared. Upon discovering the deadly property of the subject, General Mohausen issued a level 4A termination of any witnesses, roughly a third of the village, to ensure no outside knowledge of the object and initiates transport to SCP facility data expunged. This is clearly an old anomaly because uh, most anomalies you would not actually be terminated for finding out about, you would be amnesticized, which is to have your memories removed of the anomaly. During preparation for transport, the four SCP security personnel were inexplicably drawn inside the object, where they too immediately disappeared. Following inspection, it appears as if the object had had grown several new furnishings and was beginning to look like the interior of an apartment and room. General Mohausen immediately ordered the requisition of several class S3 hazmat suits for the remaining security team members who proceeded to lift the container into onto a weight in freight ships for transport to the SCP containment facility. Data expunge, data expunge. Following the termination of General Mohausen, SCP-002 was resecured by SV staff and brought into special containment in Classified, where it currently resides. Staff with clearance below level 3 have been denied access to the SCP-002 container without prior approval of at least two level 4 staff after Mil the Mulhausen incident. Well, that's barely seven minutes. I guess we can do OSCP-003. SCP-003. I actually don't know the name of this one. Hang on. Oh, biological motherboard. This one I don't think I've ever really heard about anything about. Anyway, SCP-003, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-003 is to maintain at a constant temperature of no less than 35 degrees Celsius and ideally above 100 degrees Celsius. No living multicellular organisms of category 4 or higher or complexity may be allowed to come into contact with SCP-003. In the event of total power failure, if SCP-003-1 begins to increase its mass, assigned personnel must engage in skin contact with SCP-003-1. Ideally, personnel may use their body heat to return SCP-0031 to above the critical temperature. However, skin contact must be maintained in the event of SCP-003 reaching activation temperature, lasting at minimum until SCP-003-1 
0031 advances fully to its second growth stage. Personnel who enter SCP-003's containment area must be examined for body parasites of category 4 or higher complexity and sterilized if such organisms are present. All personnel who have come in contact with SCP-0031 are to immediately report for sterilization afterwards. SCP-0031 must be removed from SCP-0032 except in cases of emergency procedures detailed above. Any significant change in SCP-0032's green activity, including pattern, frequency, or color, should be reported within three hours of occurrence. Cessation of green activity must be reported immediately. SCP-0032 must be supplied with the power via the source generator 003IX at all times. Description SCP-003 consists of two related components of separate origin, referred to as SCP-0031 and SCP-0032. SCP-0031 appears to be composed of chitin, hair, and nails of unknown biology, arranged in a configuration similar to that of a computer motherboard. Testing reveals SCP-0031 to predate earliest known circuit boards by a factor of thousands of years. SCP-0031 is considered sentient but not actively dangerous un except under certain conditions. SCP-0031 was found on a, on a stone tablet, SCP-0032, on which it currently resides. The runes on SCP-0032 are not part of any known language, with hell flickering light patterns. SCP-0032 is controlled by a non-biological internal computer, the contents of which are mostly inaccessible without risking or without risk of damage in SCP-0032. SCP-0032 is capable of controlled emissions of radiation including heat, light, and anomalous as radiation types. SCP-0032 contains an internal power source of an anomalous nature, which appears to have been losing power since centuries before discovery. It is considered probable that uh, SCP-0032 was created for the purpose of containing SCP-0031, partially interpreted the data recovered from SCP-0032 may refer to a past and or potential future LK-class restructuring event caused by SCP-0031. SCP-003 was located by remote viewing team SRV-04-Beta. It appears possible that SRV-04-Beta was deliberately contacted by SCP-0032. Other organizations Organizations have also been alerted to SCP-003's existence, possibly by similar means. Despite this, SCP-003-2 does not appear to be sentient, based on its lack of reaction to MO3 Gloria analysis and procedures. When SCP-003 drops below the temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, both components react. First, SCP-0031 enters a growth state characterized by an ex exponential increase in mass. The growth state consists of two stages. In both stages, SCP-0031 artificially refuses its growth by converting matter around it, starting with any surrounding inorganic material, including atmospheric elements. Then non-living organic materials, including cells of dead skin, hair, chin, enamel, keratin, and other biological materials. The first stage is always the same. SCP-0031 will first increase its mass, then take a form similar in shape to an ophiroid real star of 15 meters in diameter, including what appears to be a central processor of 3 meters in diameter. It will form sensory organs that appear to scan in its surrounding environment and will potentially convert the area around it to an unidentified anomalous 
as substance. SCP-0032 seems immune from convert from conversation. From conversion. The second stage describes a growth alteration which occurs when SCP-003 comes into contact with organic material. SCP-003 appears to template itself off the organic material and will attempt communication with organisms that match its initial template or templates. In its second stage, SCP-0031 may pause, slow, or change its growth. It will also convert inorganic and non-living organic elements into functionally similar structures as well, anomalously altering their physical or makeup. While growth is consistent in its first stage, in its second stage, SCP-0031's growth rate is diminished by 20 to 90 percent so long as SCP-0031 remains in contact with living organic material. The percentage is determined by the complexity of the organisms in contact with SCP-0031. SCP-0031 appears to devote a large amount of processing power to analysis of living organic material. During each of SCP-0031's growth stage, SCP-0031 Three two uses bursts of radiation that temporarily inhibit SCP-0031's growth or reverse this growth when the temperature of SCP-0031 rises above 100 degrees Celsius. Similar radiation emissions have been replicated or recorded via other anomalous means. SCP-0031's biology has been subject to the, has been the su object of extensive study. Significant elements have been identified similar to SCP Unknown, SCP 1512, and SCP 2756, the latter two of which have no further co confirmed connection to SCP 0031 and no known connection in with each other, and one of which are fully understood. Technically, even less understood than SCP-003, thanks to the extensive cross-disciplinary research on the SCP-003 objects. To date, no convincing analysis has been put forward, which satisfactorily explains SCP-001's connection to these SCP objects or others. Nor is connection to modern technology beyond appearance and potential mimicry via unknown mechanism. And then, in them, zero zero three one and acting on information gathered from the linguistic analysis of SCP zero zero three two's ruins and comparative data analysis, research team ML three Gloria has managed to establish a link between SCP zero zero three and data expunge for analysis functions. SCP zero zero three one must now be considered sentient and is to be kept a minimum of. Um, data expunge and resulting byproduct at all times. Addendum 0302. SCP-0032's power loss has been exacerbated by the process of procedures as performed by ML3 Gloria. On orders of 0510, ML3 Gloria will continue procedures. Addendum 0303. During ML3 Gloria procedures, SCP-0031 doubles its mass and begins ref the structural growth. Temperature was immediately returned to 100 degrees Celsius. Growth and mass increase of SCP-0031 continued for 9 minutes and 6 seconds, at which time a sustained radiation spike was produced by SCP-0032. In response, SCP-0031 returned to its normal state in 3 minutes and 39 seconds. New growth dissolved into a dusty residue which was collected for analysis. Both SCP-0031 and SCP-0032 ceased all detectable activity. SCP-0032 did not resume activity until connected to external power source. SCP-0032's ruins glowed uniformly gray and did not resume normal activity for three hours. SCP-0032 
between no longer appears it is to be able to maintain containment and area at a temperature above 35 degrees Celsius without external power supplied by generators. As as there's our three III through IX. Addendum 00304. The procedure detailed in Addendum 00303 was repeated and SCP-0031 again entered a growth state. After 10 minutes and 13 seconds, SCP-0032 went to get produced a sustained radiation spike. SCP-0031's growth stopped for 36 seconds and resumed at its previous state. On quadrupling its mass, SCP-0031 formed a coherent and outer shell and body. After appearing to scan its environment and partially converting its environment, SCP-0031 then reached containment, entering the observation gallery where one, where nine members of mo 3 Gloria were present. On physical contact with team members, 0331 encompassed them in, in rapidly grown appendages and stopped growth for 15 minutes. SCP-0031 then resumed growth, rearranged the component parts of the center or of its form to the shape of a three meter tall female humanoid with peripheral tentacles most shifting to extrude primarily from SCP-0031 and its newly formed hair and spine. SCP-0031 then produced rudimentary vocalizations in an apparent initial attempt to communicate with researchers. Data expunged. An unknown individual approached the compromised SCP area in, in company with a full squad of agents. The individual claimed to be acting on orders of 0510 and attempted to communicate with SCP-0031. Data expunged. Following this, this incident, Agent Jackson of MO3 and Gloria successfully restored power to SCP-0032 and activated backup generators to return the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. SCP-0031 returned to its normal state in 21 minutes and 7 seconds and was successfully recontained without incident. All nine members of M03 Gloria affected by SCP-031 were afterwards found to be physically unharmed, with no residual effects besides psychological trauma. The converted materials of SCP-003, its former containment area, did not dissolve and are now under analysis. And and dead them 0305. And in light of the previous incident, 0510 was removed from the O5 Council by joint decision of O5 Unknown, O5 Unknown, and O5 Unknown. M03 Gloria procedures have been indefinitely suspended. Special Access Program M03 Gloria required Transcript of Incident Report 821-1B, Cycle 8, for dissemination to O5 Command and Staff. Present, O52, O55, O57, O510, and Staff. Interviewed, Dr. Tilda uh, David Mose, ML3 Gloria Lead. Interviewers are unknown. Excerpt 35A. She tried to talk to us. We all heard a voice in our heads. In a sort of half language we couldn't fully understand. Something others passed out immediately. I lasted a little longer, but it wasn't because of mental fortitude. It's just that she was trying to tell us different things. She showed Jones a replay of all the memories of everything Jones ever felt about. about all over the course of a few minutes, she ripped three of the researchers apart and put them back together unharmed. 
She doesn't understand human emotion or pain or very much about how we experience the world. Yes, I would say the containment procedures are necessary. Listen, she wants to remake the world into a paradise. A paradise filled with her own alien understanding of paradise, but still a paradise designed for us, for humanity. Should we be happy to make a paradise for any sufficiently complex organism she comes across first? Along with a complex mind and enough mind to accept her, say a dog or a housefly. If she breaches this again, we have to be there first. But what? But we like. I don't know. She showed us images, not quite images. I can see in my head, but they're not pictures. The closest thing I think of is what you see when you close your eyes suddenly and tightly, but brighter and more complex. The images have metallic sounds associated with them and sensory details that we don't have the words or concepts to describe. The whole effect felt like some kind of. felt like words of some kind. I believe she wanted to see what we could understand so she could understand us. She didn't have time to finish an, an, analyzing us. I don't know what would have happened if she had. <sighs> that was SCP-002 and SCP-003. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have made it this far, please leave a comment with a question you have for me down below. See you next time.